नाजिन आपको ताजा तरीन और अहम खबर से आगा करते हैं ह्यूस्टन एथनिक मीडिया का एयर अलायंस ह्यूस्टन के इश्तराक से टूअर का इनका किया गया टूअर का आगाज टू फाइव टू जीरो कैरोलाइन स्ट्रीट ह्यूस्टन टैक्सी सेवन सेवन जीरो जीरो फोर डाउन टाउन से किया गया टूअर में लोगों की बड़ी तादाद ने शिरकत की थी इस टूअर में जो ह्यूस्टन एथनिक मीडिया के इश्तराक से मुनद किया गया था लोगों की बड़ी तादाद ने शिरकत की ह्यूस्टन में चार सौ से जायद केमिकल और मैनुफैक्चरिंग सहूलियात फ्राहम की जाती हैं एक सौ अस्सी से जायद कंक्रीट बैच प्लांट्स मौजूद हैं जबकि एक सौ चालीस से जायद धातों को रिसाइकल करने के दायरे काम कर रहे हैं Heat trapping gases are a type of pollution. They're not the only pollution. There are other types of pollution, smog, ozone, carcinogens. But it's a concerning type of pollution because what pollutes the air warms the climate. So we're also very concerned about where heat trapping gases come from. And this is really interesting, but not unlike other big cities where you'll see almost half and half. The first top line is energy sector, so refineries, petrochemicals. The bottom line is transportation, cars, trucks, trains, ships and planes, right? And they're practically the same. That's carbon emission in the Houston area. And that's actually very common for large cities. Why? Because we have a lot of cars. Planes. Right. Okay. So that was my third message. Here are the pollution sources. They're pretty much half and half, if you remember that, between industry and cars. Okay. Next up. This was the map, sir, I was going to say was going to really pop out to you. This is message number four. I'm going to go to message number five and then turn it over to Dr. Ua. Message number four. Environmental harms are not equal in Houston. Just for the reasons we were talking about. This diagram shows you a phenomenon that those of us in environmental justice work call the Houston arrow. Have folks heard about this before? No? So what the Houston arrow is, it's just a visual. It's a visual reminder. When you map pretty much any vulnerability measure, poverty, education status, employment history, if you map any one of those socioeconomic measures, and or map race and ethnicity, and or map environmental sources. So all those TRIs, those 571 toxic release inventory sites I mentioned, you see this pattern. Will you turn that light off behind your head, do you mind? Can you see it a little better? It's called the Houston arrow. This is the arrow, there's an arrow, right? And what the Houston arrow is doing, it's doing either of these two things. It's either pointing you to the areas of harm, mm -hmm. or it's showing you where there isn't any. Mm -hmm. mm. And I'll, I, I'm sure you can guess what this is pointing to. So these are the census tracts in the Houston area that are black, brown, low income, and have environmental harms. This, these are the census tracts that are not. And virtually every measure you map in Houston will look like this. And that's why we now call it the Houston Arrow. Here's another version of the Houston Arrow. This is my last message, and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Dweck. My last message is this. Yeah, but you've just given us a great headline. Yes. Houston Arrow. Yes. And I think I, I didn't put the Houston Arrow source on here, but there is a website for the Houston Arrow, which we can give to you as well. I gave you the original source. This map came from the Environmental Protection Agency. It's specifically about environmental justice. But the Houston Arrow website has versions of these maps that show you other metrics. But here's another version that I also want to show you too. It's a little harder to see this one. It's one of the reasons I turned the light off. This is life expectancy in Houston. So here's race, social vulnerability, and environmental harm. Here's life expectancy. And you see it pop out. It's a little harder, not quite as dramatic, but it's here. But I think what's really dramatic is when you see these darker census tracts that's lower life expectancy. So these things track together. Environmental harms track to life expectancy. And in the Houston area, there is a 20 year difference between the lowest, right here, and the highest, which is somewhere in here. It's really small, it's like that one. Right? <laughs> so, back to the first message. Air pollution contributes to virtually every health issue. Houston has a significant air pollution problem. That problem is not distributed equitably in our communities. And as a result, environmental justice communities are sicker and dying sooner. And as a closer and a transition, that's why we were founded. So we have been here since the late 1980s to try to reverse all of those trends that I just shared with you. 
and you have materials in your folder about the work we do, the campaigns we work on. There will be staff on the bus today that can talk to you more about our campaigns. We have a campaign to address every source of air pollution. We have industry campaigns, we have transportation campaigns, we have backyard polluter campaigns, we have legislative advocacy campaigns, and under, underpinning all of this, we have campaigns to share information, which is how critical everyone in this room is, and we have campaigns to engage community members as advocates for their health. They, we study this, they live this, and we want them to be able to advocate for the health of their neighborhoods and their communities, and we have campaigns to do that too. जिसकी वजह से ह्यूस्टन के रहने वाले फ़ाई आलूगी से नबरदाजमा होते हैं और ये आलूगी उनके रहने की जगहों और खेल के मैदानों के भी नज़दीक होती है इस टूअर का मकसद फ़ाई आलूगी से पाक माहौल का क्याम और इसे यकीनी बनाना था टूअर के दौरान एयर अलायंस ह्यूस्टन की टीम ने टूअर के शुरा को तफसीत से आगा किया वॉन फ्लोरस ने बस में शुरा से खिताब किया शुरा को बताया गया है कि ह्यूस्टन की वसी और रीस रिहायशी तरक्की से सनती और नकलो हमल से मुतल फ़ाई आलूगी का फैलाव और कुर्बत हमारे खत्ते के फ़ाई निगरानी के नेटवर्क में दूरी को जाहिर करती है that we, and this law required the US EPA to set standards for certain air pollutants called criteria air pollutants. And these are pollutants that have been studied and found to have um, health impacts and public health impacts on humans that are exposed to them. So standards have been set, and those standards are called the National Ambient Air Quality Standards for these five pollutants. And the sixth one, but this I decided to stick with those that are um, they can get through air exposure. The, the sixth one is lead, and lead is through water and you know, um, um, paint and all that. So what, the first one is particulate matter, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur oxide, ozone, and carbon monoxide. And there are standards set by the US EPA for these five pollutants. एक मजबूत कम्युनिटी एयर मॉनिटरिंग नेटवर्क की जरूरत है ताकि कम्युनिटीज़ को जहरीली फ़ाई आलूगी के बारे में बेहतर तरीके से समझाया जा सके और मुनासिब हमत अमली तैयार करें इस मौके पर सैंडी क्लोज ने सब में पम्फलेट तकसीम किए एयर अलायंस ह्यूस्टन की टीम मैन तो ओनली डिसूजा वॉन फ्लोरस जेनिफर खादिया लटेशिया गोटेरस क्रिस्टल नो शामिल हैं To move on, sources of air pollution pollution, like um, Jen had already mentioned, range from petrochemical industry and as well as traffic pollution. Um, but for this report, we focused on industrial sources of air pollution. Now, the objective of the study, our report really tried to examine or sought to examine um, the health impacts and related costs associated with particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxide released by 47 of the largest point source um, industrial fires facilities in Harris County. And um, the health outcomes that we looked at were um, excess mortality and asthma hospitalizations. We utilized um, air, dispersion, air dispersion modeling for this um, study. We sought to answer the following questions. First of all, what amount of these three pollutants do these sources release into the air? Right. Um, then we looked at the average community concentrations of these pollutants around homes, schools, and um, sensitive land uses. Then the third um, step was we looked at the excess health impact. Like I mentioned earlier, we looked at asthma, hospitalizations, and excess mortality that are attributable to exposures from this industry. So from now here on, I'll just show you a bunch of maps so I can <laughs> <laughs> utilize the five minutes I probably have left. So like I said, the first step was, you know, we looked at just what the average um, sequel level concentration for PM2.5 and for each of the other two pollutants. So as you can see here, um, the top two emitters of PM2.5 are the ExxonMobil um, Baytown refinery, all the things plants, and that's in the Baytown area, as you can see. The darker the color in the map, the higher the levels of concentration of PM2.5. Um, and you can see Deer Park is also darker in color, and that's because the third largest emitter is a Shell Deer Park um, plant. So you can see that the highest model concentration for PM2.5 and excess mortality were in zip codes housing the same facilities, Baytown and Deer Park. Mm -hmm. Moving on, we then overlay, you know, um, looked at 
what the um, excess mortality cases were per zip code and that were attributable, attributable to exposures from those industrial sources. And of course, the same location data on the data is out there, and that shows um, cumulative all zip codes within our study area recorded approximately 33 additional deaths per year. And this was caused specifically by um, PM2.5 emissions from those facilities of concern. Um, the effect is also a little bit uh, darker, but they sound clearly, it's clearly shown there to have the highest concentration. Now moving on, the second pollutant of concern that we looked at was sulfur dioxide. We also did the same thing. We looked at the average, annual average code level concentration for sulfur dioxide. And here park, um, Channel View area, Bay Town, and I didn't just cover leaf, Jacinto City, and a couple of other, Galena Park, you can see the dark part. Pleasantville. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pleasantville, yeah. thank you. You know, all showed higher concentrations of um, sulfur dioxide. Then we estimated the annual excess asthma hospitalizations. We chose these outcomes because um, studies have clearly shown a correlation between exposures to sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and एक्सासिबेशन ऑफ आसमा वर्क अख्तितम दिन डेढ़ बजे एयर अलायंस यूस्टन बिल्डिंग कैरोलाइन स्ट्रीट में हुआ